conversation. When you are working with someone else, you cannot walk this journey of life by yourself. So, in reinventing myself, I still know that there's a glass ceiling, invisible glass ceiling, because you're in an industry that men, that they get, you know, but you're able in a subtle manner to do that which they do and better than they do. a lot in my journey in life that failure is called an experiment and failure is successful. And you have to ask yourself, what do I want mentorship for? What do I want mentorship for? And what does this person represent? But rather than going up and down saying they are no mentors, it's a lie. They are mentors and there are many people who are mentoring all the time. I joined Business Day over 13 years ago and as I got in, I realized that there was much work to do. I was passionate about writing about women, that's why I started. But I knew that beyond writing about them in the papers, it was time to tell their stories in a unique and peculiar way through an event, hence the birth of Inspiring Women series. We are 10 now, so it's 10 years. had interviewed several women across different um, sectors and I observed that they had so much to say. They had many things to say, but the space given to them, the paper wasn't enough. So I nursed the idea and I knew they had, you know, really, really intriguing stories to share. So I, just, I began to nurse the idea of, you know, having an event where I'll gather these amazing women to share their stories and inspire other women. So I told my boss, Mr. Frank Aikobo, what I had in mind, and it sounded nice to him. And I think the, the, the response was, I just hope you know what you're doing. <laughs> if it's for you to get support from me, you know you have it. So he gave me that support and, you know, that was how I started. Why did I start it? I started it because I knew that there was a need for people to know that whatever you're going through, you're not alone in that space. There are people you look up to, there are people you admire, who are also going through the same challenges. So it just became natural for me to sit and think and say, what do I do next? Hence the birth you know, of the Inspire Women series. And so that started about 10 years ago. I mean, I'd spent a year or two in business state, yeah. Then I said, you know what, beyond just uh, writing about this women, let's hear them you know, share their hearts. And then it began in 2010. And like, like we always say, the rest is history. Yeah. All right. Ah, um, there's been several, but I'd like to pick a few. The first edition of Inspiring One series was um, overwhelming because I was starting out, you know, and it just made me feel like, you know, like I said, you know, when my boss said, I hope you know what you're doing. <laughs> You know, but it was a bit challenging because, you know, I sat down the other day and I was asking myself, how did I get to Ghana? Because um, I remember Anna Tete, Madame Anna Tete, she was then the Minister of Trade and Industry or so in Ghana. I remember when I went to her office in Ghana. I don't know how I, <laughs> I don't remember how I got there. I don't know to Ghana. And I sat in front of her, she put her hand under her, you know, she was just looking at me. You know, I was just telling her what I wanted to happen, how I wanted her to be there. She asked me, how did you know about me? I said, so I read about you online. I googled you, you know. She was like, okay, I will come. And I'm like, oh, just like that. <laughs> she said, yes, Kim, I'm going to come and support you. And, you know, because it was the first, you know, it was a bit, I was all over the place. I just wanted to make sure everything was fine. I didn't have a car then, so my formal editor, uh, <laughs> Mr. Philip Isapa, he said, okay, Kim, let's use my ride, you know, so. He helped me, we went to the airport to pick her up. 
you know, when she saw me, she was just looking at me like, I'm like, oh, thank you so much, Ma, for coming. And she said, Kenny, I said I was going to come, so I'm here. You know, she came, she got into the hall. We had lodged her somewhere. Everything was just, it was a bit overwhelming, but I just think that was a success. That first edition was very memorable for me, and I can't forget it in a GP. Um, the second one was also a bit memorable because that was when I had Yvonne Chaka Chaka. That was such a beautiful experience. Um, she was in the country around that, not too long, and she said she was coming back. So I said, can you please come for my event? You know, you make me happy if you come. <laughs> and she said, yeah, okay, Kimmy, I'll come. And, and she came, <laughs> you know, it was a big deal to me. And I'm like, you know, and I remember when she was speaking and she said it because as at that time she was an ambassador and she was charging $30,000 to speak at any event. As at that time, like seven, eight years ago. So when she started speaking, she said, you know, I usually charge such an amount of money. You know, I was just thinking to myself, I'm sure my boss is thinking, Kemi, we didn't discuss this, <laughs> this amount of money. You know, but she said, despite what I'm charging, I'm not collecting a dime from Kemi because I want to support her. I thought that was a bit, um, not a bit, it was truly really emotional for me that she could think of me in such a way of wanting to support me despite not knowing me, you know what I mean before. That was a big deal to me. Um, the other one was at the fourth and fifth edition. So while I was planning the fourth edition of Inspiring Moon series, my father died. He was at the peak of planning and it was a bit um, emotional for me because I wasn't sure I was going to be able to, you know, weather that storm. But somehow it happened, you know. And then the fifth edition, the same month, my mother died. And I was planning Inspiring Woman series. So like in the space of a year, I lost my father and my mom. And it was at the heat of the event, you know. I remember Didi Wunnelli said to me, she said, Kemi, she <laughs> we're downstairs at the, you know, the other side where they we normally put the speakers before the event starts. I said, Kemi, Kemi, you don't have to do this, you know. You can actually, everybody can go, Kemi, it's okay. Your mom is gone. No, I can't do it. If I were you, I won't be able to do it. I said, did you have to do it? I mean, pull away. She said, Kenny, no, everybody can't go home. <laughs> I said, did they have to do it? She said, are you sure? I said, yes. So we got into the hall and I thought, you know, she wasn't going to mention it. Before they started speaking, that was the first thing. She said, Kenny, stand up. I'm like, oh God, did he say this thing here? You know, and she told everybody, you know, this girl lost her mom last year. I mean, her father last year. And she's lost her mom this year and she's still doing this. So everybody just looked at me like, it's a lie. You know, so that was a bit challenging for me. So why, why the ninth was a bit emotional for me was because at the eighth edition, we had Ibidu Ngodalo. And I was looking through the past editions that we've had, and I just, you know, remembered her, uh, things that she was saying at that particular edition, um, her story, how she had had to do countless numbers of IVF and all of that, and how she was speaking passionately and deeply so i just said to myself i said well this lady was here you know the year and that was the last one that she did you know with us she came before i think the sixth or so as it as, no she came at the seventh or sixth as a guest but by the time she came on the eighth she was a speaker and she shared so much by the time we we're going to the nine i i really remembered her you know, and it just felt like, wow, we can be here today and gone tomorrow. So it's very important that, you know, whatever it is that we can do while we are alive, we do the best um, that we can. I'm not where I want to be yet, but I also recognize that I'm not where I used to be. So there's been progress. 10 years is not a joke. Um, but having said that, I believe a lot of the impact has been made. What next? Like I said before, you know, you don't rest on your own. You have to keep doing more. There are more women's stories to tell. There are, you know, their lives to be impacted. For all you know, <laughs> there are people who haven't even heard about business today, not stop with women's hope. So we're just scratching the surface. We have to do more. And that is why I appreciate our, you know, our move and passion for the digital space. We're going to be telling more of our stories in the digital space. I'm also going to be getting more I mean, I'm there already and I've been there for the longest, but we just need to do more because, you know, people need to hear more about what we do. Um, and I need to tell women's stories, you know, better in a bigger and more elaborate way. So we've done 10 years, we have 
10 more years and another 10 years till my teeth are gone. <laughs> You know, but the most important thing is that we're going to consistently tell the stories of women and inspire women like we've never done before. So the future is bright and we're looking forward to it. It has been 10 amazing years. I want to say thank you first to my boss, <laughs> who's also a father, the publisher of Business Day, Mr. Frank Aigbo. Thank you so much for your support. But you're a father and a boss, so thank you. Thank you to all the women who have opened their hearts to me and shared their stories with me. Some have never done it on other platforms before. Thank you. Thank you for fellow women who have supported me. You know, I have some amazing women who I call my big aunties. You know, anytime I just call them, they're always there. Thank you for helping not to walk this walk alone. I um, also thank you to the readers, to everyone who is always sending messages and saying, oh, I like this person's story and all of that. And for people who have attended Inspiring Women series for 10 years, thank you for being a part of our journey. We trust that God helping us, we will do more. Thank you and God bless you. <laughs>